Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros podcast. We're just getting warmed up. Kids, we've had a lively, spirited conversation before we went uh, on air day. We got Jonathan Kites here today. How are you? I'm well, thank you. You look great. Thanks. You're on uh, another number one show. Yeah. How is that possible? Im- impossible. Not possible. Couldn't believe it. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. We had we shot it in, I think, August through November, and then we didn't even know the air date, and they're like, it's going to be April 14th, and it blew up overnight. Yeah. Dad, stop embarrassing me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, D- Jamie Foxx and David Allen Greer. Best in the, by the way, Jamie Foxx, best entertainer in the biz, in my opinion, all the way around. I've said this forever. Yeah. And everybody's like, you're fucking crazy. No, like, no. He, there's nothing that guy can't do. He can do impressions. You and I do impressions. He can do fucking impressions. Incredible. Too. He can win Academy Awards doing them. Yes. <laughs> I don't think, when people go like people, there are people that do impressions and then there are people that do impressions. He did one so well that he won an Oscar for yeah, it. And he can, it's funny because when I first met him, I, um, I said, uh, you know, I always... Like he, he, I don't think people realize that he can sing and do it because Ray Charles oh, was yeah. still alive when he, um, when, when, uh, when they were recording. Yes. Yeah, this wasn't yeah. a Rami Malik where he didn't even learn the songs. That he, yeah, yeah, Rami. Which, by respect to Rami, I mean, but, he's a great actor, but like he didn't have time to do it. They just brought him in right at the end. That right? was fucking. I thought he was shitty. I don't. I, hate, I, I, I haven't seen that movie, but I. He, Let's he, take he a stand right movie. now. Yeah, I'm taking a hard stand right now. In I don't know about that he movie. He looked. But, he looked like him. Yeah, and I think that he acted like him but the fact that jamie could sing and play the piano like ray charles yeah. well you know he on living color he used to do an old character called ray charles in charge yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so the i mean yeah but you're right Dude, and he would do the yeah, whole shit now, yeah. how's, how's scott bayo involved in all this well he's always involved in anything <laughs> i do um i love charles in charge of my life uh, Days I would see and him at, nights or like the, all of it, all, all of it. him and buddy Lembeck. Oh. <laughs> come on, dude. He would come into the cheesecake factory that I used to work at humble brag. <laughs> and, um, Just guys, relax. I'm doing well. He's, not, what getting I'm trying to tell He's you. not getting paid to say that. Either. Um, not, I'm getting paid by California pizza kitchen because their <laughs> stock is tanking right now. CBK. Um, but uh, he, Scott Bayo would come in, and I just wanted to go start humming the theme, but mm-hmm. casually How can near you him. Not, man? You exactly, or I'd say Bob Blah Blah a bunch of times. It's either Bob one Blah Blah, yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah, you know what's funny about the show Charles in Charge was they sold the house and he was in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a new family just yep. came in. Yeah, and it was the same guy. Squ- I'm going to pull squatters that. Rights. I'm going to pull that. Squatters rights. I'm Absolutely. Actually, I'm going to pull that. The Thank next you. time I see somebody in the neighborhood move in, I'm just going to show up the day of moving. Like, hey. Uh, What's up, guys? Yeah, you're in my house. Yeah. Like, I, I work here. Like, what do you mean you work here? I take care of your children. Yeah, I, I take care of your children. Well, we don't have any. Well, you got to give well, me something to do. I'm in pets? charge. Yeah. That's the deal. Yeah. Charles it says it is right in here. charge. And he had no real power. No. Nothing. There, there's Nothing. No, there's no phone number or email address on his business card. It just says Charles and big letters, no last name, and then in charge at the bottom. That's yeah. It. And then, then you turn it around. Oh, in charge of what? Our days and our nights. Yes. Our yeah. wrongs and our rights. The whole fucking song <laughs> is on. Oh, it's there. It's a little bit weird that he sings it too. But um, yeah, he was always just hanging out, Joe. It was great. <laughs> fucking wild. Fucking wild. Well, what else is he going to do? Eh. Why not? I don't know. I'm trying well, to. Was I, it the I Cheesecake this, Factory in Marina Del Rey? It was the one at the Sherman Oaks, the Galleria. Oh God, that's a depressing one. Yeah. It, well, it was even more depressing because it was supposed to open on 9/11, <laughs> uh, and that's a real thing. And um, so that was great. Um, but yes, <laughs> but that that it, that was so that was like one of the only businesses that was doing well. It looked like that the theme of the mall was going out of business, and they couldn't keep a restaurant across the the way from it because anytime something would try to open like cheesecake factory would just bury them people would rather wait yep. in line at yep. cheesecake factory than be served immediately whatever crap they were offering i'm wow. going to i'm going to i'm going to give you the hardest question you've ever had on an interview right now <laughs> let me take off my jacket yeah take yeah. off your fucking jacket dude Get Oops, ready for sir, this. It's fine. I Buckle get, up for this, yeah, okay? I did it on purpose. I'm this like, is the most off, difficult question. Let me take question. off my shirt. <laughs> and let, hey, let me preface this by saying I don't have an answer. Okay. Mm, I will, I Gun will. to head right now. Shit. You get to choose one. One item off the Of the cheesecake, cheesecake factory? Yep. Out of the seven different menus they have now? Uh, there's, there's 20 five, pages. There's you need the goddamn two. Rosetta Stone to figure this shit out at yes. this point, man. Yes, but you only get one. What do you go with? Oh, my. Either, oh fuck, yeah, mm. don't be. Fisted. I'm trying to think of something that I'm gonna enjoy but won't instantly give me diabetes mm. because ah, 
I, I was, I thought your dia, and I was going to go Rhea on that, not be. Oh no, you're getting diarrhea no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's, really. that's par for the course. Yes, yes. Um, how do they not sell diapers? So I think. <laughs> They're think missing out on the vertical yeah, integration. Yeah, guys, I'm here to pitch that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> vertical integration. Um, oh, my God. I would say I think that they're, they're chicken Madeira. You know what? I got to go miso salmon. Ah. Miso salmon with the butter glaze. Uh, you had to think about it, though. You flipped I it. I did. You, flipped you know why? Because the, the Madeira, because there's something, there's, there's so much sugar in the salmon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like a miso salmon cheesecake. Yeah. You're getting the dessert. It's a two for one. It's a thick gloss. That's Brother, a high gloss that's on there. It looks like it was built for a commercial. You know when they have oh, yeah. to they add, add like oil, exactly yeah. motor oil, glue, yep. like, and no, things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, for the tops of things, it's glue. Sometimes you ever seen that before? Yeah. Like the the uh, food photography tricks. Shoot, uh, dude, it, it's shoot. nonsense. So we, we they pour they pour like if it's if it's cereal floating on top of stuff, they put something in the bottom of it to make it float like that. But oh yeah. yeah. Well, do well that. here's yeah. the thing. So we we did commercials at, at our production company. Whenever it was a food shoot, or milk, milk in particular, because it's really hard to light. It was the worst day of everyone's life, and they would just make you do it over and over again. And the ad execs sit right behind the camera, and they're like, pour it again. Oh, I've been in those commercials. I did a Mrs. Butterworth commercial, and I had to uh, keep did eating. You do, were you Mrs. Butterworth? Yeah, I was the only adult ever. I was a kid <laughs> who, ever, who, was, who grew up with her, and now was trying to get her to talk by eating her pancakes. It was a weird message that I don't think children got. Did you have dialogue and, um, with Mrs. Butterworth, yes or no? I did have dialogue. But no she way. Didn't, yeah, she yeah. didn't speak back at any point. No, it, no. The commercial looked like an insane person talking to a, a like, bowl of syrup. It looked, like Clint, <laughs> it looked like Clint Eastwood at the 2012 Republican National That's 100%. Yeah. Talking she, to the empty chair. The chair yeah, yeah, yeah. It was this, but it was a full bottle, and I, was, and I would eat, and, and we had to do this forever. I'm like, I think we got it, guys. They're like, no, do it again. Good Lord. And I'm eating. I didn't eat pancakes for five years after, and I keep eating it, and I have to eat it, and then chew it and swallow it so that I can get out the dialogue to her. So there wasn't the, they're like, do you need a spit bucket? I'm like, well, I can't talk with pancake in my mouth. Yeah. And so I have to go, oh, it's, it's just not the same. And I kept talking to her. But then you got to start focusing on not showing the panic in your eyes as you're trying to swallow that shit as fast as possible. And by the way, That's it gets so dry yeah. after a while. I'm just like, I, I have, you know, like when you look at actually a, a box of pancake unmade batter yeah and you think like by the end of the day that's all gonna you're gonna have it. two bags of kitty litter in you yeah and it's like it's unbelievable and i go can i just get some water and then you realize no 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 water is the enemy of this it's mm. expanding yeah. it with it rate it's like oh, a yeah. universe in your stomach yeah and i remember thinking like guys we got this and they're like we're gonna go one more time and then i did i think i did it for like five hours oh my god dude what was your what was the toilet look like the next day for you i haven't shat yet yeah it's <laughs> No, uh, my all, colon looked like a character from the clumps. It's, that's all. It's, that's all bread. You get a John man. Wayne. Oh. Colon. That shit takes a while to come out. Exactly, bro. I I was like, if I I, I didn't want to shit because I didn't want to die in the toilet like Elvis. I'm like, I'm gonna die in the toilet, dude. Yeah. Hot Bob, look up the John Wayne story. It's, there was something meat, crazy. Dennis about Leary it's unbelievable. It, Dennis Leary called it a meat sweater inside of his ass. Yes, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like, like they pulled out several feet of meat and out of. His I want to say it was like 18 feet of meat. That but was that's what. That's how you want to die. That's how you make hot dogs. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's also true. You, you put him through John Wayne, and he was a small dude. So uh, like, but was but that's well. Yeah. Would you ever, you ever go to the Hollywood Walk of Fame? And everybody goes to the John Wayne. He's things. smaller than you thought. I and, and shoes are like and, baby shoes. And in photos, I would have thought he was like six four, six five. But in real life, he's not even close. No, no. His and shoes it, doubled as the My Buddy Cowboy <laughs> Edition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spurs and all. It his, was two it, wheels. Very his, Holocaust -y shoes. His name. Like little, little, he, yeah, he's little, little leather shoes. Yeah. Right? Most of, but it's interesting. Most, I I'm six three, but I always say six two because I remember when I was auditioning for something, they're like, six, three, they're like, that's way too tall. Yeah. Before they even, on Broke Girls, by the way, the two girls and Matt Moy were the same height. So that oh, they boy. put Beth in heels so that she, yeah, because they're so small. Matt's really small in real life. I, he, I, he, I put him in one of my movies. He's great. Um, Super funny guy. Very small guy. I said, I go, I go, you're leaving money on the table by not selling adorable versions of yourself in toy stores across this great nation. Yeah. He's like, uh, kind of like an Ewok. I, I, I was going to say Gremlin, yeah. but yeah, same thing. Well, you can't him after midnight if he's a Gremlin, though. So no. you want to go Ewok, oh, that no. way you don't have then to Then that is a problem, because yeah. he is one of those guys who sleeps, walks into the fridge Ooh. like a Mary Melody's cartoon. Is and he, just is in does a he pie. smoke a lot of weed yeah. or something, or is it just like No, random? he's just hungry for pie. Mm. Well, we're all hungry for pie one way or another, right? Yes, <laughs> by the way, brought to you by pie. <laughs> Can, can random food objects start doing ads like milk? Like milk does ads, but not 
a certain brand of milk, just milk, just milk itself. and then beef. Well, they, ads. They've got together. They're like, it, it doesn't matter. Can somebody just buy something Can from us? Can we do a taco ad? Just do an ad for tacos, not for any particular taco, just tacos at large. You know what he loves doing? Jonathan loves doing impressions about this things like that so <laughs> yeah they're like well what would christian bale say no that was the other thing they, they would was a little something like they, this. they would we literally go, they, they yeah. would go they would bring up a thing that we weren't talking about yes. they're like so what's up with the economy and i'm kind of like huh i'm like doing a look to an audience that isn't there yeah. and they're like does liam neeson like the economy and i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> you know though and you have to give them I, I a, go, a liam neeson quote oh. about the economy what was your liam neeson quote about the economy i i said um I said, I think he knows, I go, I, I trust Liam Neeson to make good decisions because, um, did you ever see the movies taken, uh, one, two, three, or four, or whatever, I want whatever phone plan he's on because he never dropped a call in four movies or whatever. Yeah, and so in several continents. Yeah, yeah I said right. never. He yeah. never dropped a call. There was Impressive, never bad yeah. service. No. So I go, I trust his. So you always like try to corral it into something else because yeah, yeah. then they just throw out, it's like they're just sitting there with a goddamn dartboard and, and the dictionary, and like a darts and just being like, you know, Rodman, shoehorn, and you like, yeah. now what is, you know, Trump think of that? And you're like, God damn. Do you ever <laughs> see uh, Liam Neeson's bit on Life's Too Short? Did you see Unbelievable. That? With Ricky Gervais. It's, it's one incredible. Of the yeah. Like where they're trying to get him to be a green, he's like, he wants to learn how to do comedy. Yeah, it's like, incredible. Like a green grocer because I I'm, I played Oscar Schindler. No one's going to believe that I was a green grocer. Yeah, he was fucking hilarious. Then though. he wanted to be a doctor and he just kept telling people they had AIDS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was like, ah, riddled with it. Just like <laughs> deadpan as fucking yeah. like, man. He's a very self-aware man. I'll say I'll give him that. Yeah, he's amazing. He knows who he is. He's funny. He's got a huge cock. Oh, huge. Let's, everybody, we, everybody in uh, in L.A. Bob, can you pull up Liam Neeson's cock. dick, please? Yeah, pull up Liam Neeson's dick, and and also, do we get the meat thing for? You're gonna have to pull it up on meat? one of these double screens because it won't fit on one. I can assure <laughs> yeah, you that. Yeah, it's a two screener. That fucking dong. Oh man, the, and that's uh, just flaccid. Yeah. What's the meat thing? The meat Bob? thing was false. They it did was not. False? They did oh, not. That's disappointing. Pull all kinds shit. of all kinds of shit out of. John, John, Wayne's well, John Wayne's They weren't head. digging around in his colon. I his, feel like that's not false. His real name is Marion Morrison, by the way. Is it really? Yeah. No wonder he went with John Remember Wayne. that boxer that was almost heavyweight champion, uh, whatever, Morrison? Uh, Tommy Morrison. Tommy, Tommy Morrison. Machine Gun got, Morrison. Got AIDS. Yeah. Got then AIDS. said he didn't have AIDS and died. And then AIDS. he went, to, he's, he was uh, the lead in Rocky Five. That's his nephew. Yeah. yeah, that's the story, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's a way better story. But then yeah. Rocky Five. Yeah. yeah, Rocky Five was, that was the only shitty Rocky. Rocky HIV, and then the yeah. the V is the five. You <laughs> know? How funny would it be if instead of cancer in Creed, Sylvester Stallone actually had AIDS from fighting Tommy Morrison? Ugh. that would be a way better movie. A lot better movie. Yeah. Well, it, right now they're just going back and fighting the kids. So, like in this last yeah. one, because I watched it the other night, uh, he's fighting uh, Drago's kid. Oh and yeah. It, so go back and fight. You know, is Mr. T's Tommy next? Morrison's kid, and it's Charlie Sheen, where it's like the AIDS passed on. Um, pull up his dong, by the way. Let's see. By the way, I want to look at that. I'd love to hog. see. Oh, that's a pretty nice. Look, look at that hog. Is that on the screen right now? Yeah. Put that. By on By the YouTube. way, he has no blood in his face because it's all in his cock. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like he's literally the cock is draining life from him. It's yeah. like a face hugger from Aliens, but it's, it's like, hugging it's something like, else. Like the Tobias, side of his trousers. It's like, it's like Tobias Funke's hair in season three of Arrested Development. A hundred. The hair is just so, sucking the life. Oh, out he him. couldn't wear the jean shorts, by the way. Oh, not like that. No, you couldn't God. be a never. You need a jean a sleeve like for that yeah. hog. So slide yeah. down. Uh, let's go. Let's pan upward toward the yeah, face. Can we slide down? He there looks like is. he's carrying a game of shoots and ladders down there. You can watch him get less healthy as the fucking screen goes up. Oh yeah. There's no blood, bro. Two cups for Yahtzee. And it's just yeah. together. It's just, where it's just, just his like, balls. Oh, shit. Yeah. I yeah they, they look like snake eyes down there. Now a I movie he was not in. I understand yeah. if he needs to drink a little baby blood because he needs more blood than the average person, right? Pro and to be probably. honest, having a cock like that is a responsibility. You know how the Hulk says, You wouldn't like me when I'm angry? He goes, You wouldn't like me when I'm hard. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can't pick up my fucking head. And his wife passed away. I'm not saying it was from that dick, but. Um, it, it was a skiing accident. Was it really? Yeah. But I think skiing and accident were both in air. <laughs> yeah, air quotes. Air quotes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she died on the slopes, which is what he calls his cock. Fucking dong on Nisa, man. That's crazy. God. Uh, we were talking about this the other day because I'll, I'll I, like. By the way, if your, wife, if your wife is going to die, having a nice cock is probably a uh, silver lining, I guess. You're not going to yeah. have a whole oh, lot yeah, of yeah, trouble yeah, finding yeah. a new one. Yeah. Plus, being rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. Good. I think. You're good on that. I mean, I, I, look, I'm just trying. I to look think on the, the room agrees side. with you. I'm just trying to look on the bright side of life. <laughs> sure, because yeah. that's what I do here on this show is look on the bright side of things. That I, I saw a picture of Liam Neeson, by the way, with uh, Bill Paxton the other day. 
and I was like, uh, Bill Paxton's somebody else. Who's the third one? Bill Paxton's dead now, right? Yes. And yeah. two other people were dead. Liam Neeson's still alive. And out of the group, I was like, but he's not he's even, healthy he's as a them. horse's cock. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> none of them are that old, though. I mean, Bill Paxton, that was a shock. What was he, 60? <sighs> yeah, he was. And he, he didn't seem old. like the kind of guy that lived a weird life or anything. He was going in, he had an irregular, something with his heart. And he oh. went in for surgery, and the doctor had actually said that. Um, it's like I was in the room. I was like, well, when we operated on him, <laughs> then, no, they go, he had a very, there was a high percentage chance that he wasn't going to make it oh, through. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. Mm. Did, you, did you happen to drop a junior mint into his chest or anything? I was like, guys, has anybody seen All my kinds of deep vape yeah. pen? Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, sorry about that. Zip him back up. Um, but yeah, he's still alive, and I think he's 76. Whose dick is that? No, he's not 76. Whose who's dick are you pulling up there, Bob? Uh, that's Neeson. Buck Naked? Yeah, he was, in a, he was naked in a movie. He took a little to find him, but this is him fucking flopping this around. This is him playing Tarzan, where oh, he's, he's. Oh well, we can't. You can't put that, this on. Don't put this on screen. Oh, it's not on YouTube. All right, so that's that just looks, for us. That looks like an appliance. But I'm not gonna lie to you. Shit. He looks like Tarzan and the rope that he's climbing. Yeah. My God, man. That is fucking phenomenal. I have never seen. I've. Look, I I've want this like, NFT. You know what I mean? It's I, like. Yeah. I've only heard this story. I can't. I can only afford half of this NFT. Wow. Holy shit, dude! Because when you're shooting outside. It, look, there's some rain there. It's a little yeah, cold. Yeah, this is his cock freezing. Yeah. That's, that's like at its worst moment. And look at that goddamn thing. I'm not going to lie to you. He looks like um, a, a weird um, Star Wars uh, robot where like the third leg is propelling him at such a mm. speed. Yeah. yeah. I, if he was at, on Border Patrol, they could throw that out and save a family of five Mexicans in the, in the Colorado. This is his audition for Indiana Jones where he's also playing the whip. The, yeah. <laughs> the Colorado River is where the Grand Canyon is, by the way. Oh, is it? Rio Grande. Rio is where Grande. You're Whatever, man. I don't fucking know rivers. He's also, uh, this, yeah, this rivers. is him going, as is Indiana Jones going, even though I have one, I hate snakes. <laughs> They're like, we don't believe that you would hate snakes. You have a boa constrictor coming out betwixt your thighs, boy. There's a tattoo at the base that says, can also be used as a flotation device, I believe. <laughs> After, when he goes down, everyone's like, grab Liam Neeson's yeah. cock. <laughs> There's a separate, uh, the airline ladies have to do a separate thing for him when they're on. It's like, look, forget about the seats. Yeah. Yeah. Grab the airbags aren't going to deploy. Yeah. Just pull the cord. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, I'm halfway there. <laughs> The best is we have some guests in from out of town. Whatever. Some listeners. Uh, you're welcome. It's all real. You just, this is what you can't see. Was the, I feel like if all the blood drains out of his body into his cock, then he's going to make him more buoyant, right? Absolutely. That's a ballast, yeah. basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. He goes, yeah, it, he sacrifices himself. <laughs> So you guys can live. <laughs> to get a hand, this mean, is that guy's the real Jesus. You know what I mean? Well, if he, if your girlfriend left you for him, how pissed off would you be about life? I would. Just I, mean, ask, I would want a picture of the dick. That's all I would ask for. Just one one solid. I want to know of, for, of what it's hard. I, I want that's soft. I want both. Yeah, he, I want soft and hard to prove that that's his real dick, and then I, I will know for sure throughout my life that that's his real dick, and I'll be happy with that. He looks like he's holding a, a Japanese human-sized pillow between. Yeah, his legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a sleep pillow. It's a cuddle buddy. What are those it's things sleep, called? Sleep pillow, yeah. Body yeah. pillow. Body pillow, yeah. Body mm. pillow is what, is what he's Yeah, but, but the ones with anime characters on them. Oh. There's uh, a specific name an for An underage it. body pillow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, an Epstein? <laughs> I, uh, the Crystalia? Hilarious. Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, they're called too soon or too late on that one. Daki Makura. I'm not saying all that. Let's yeah. just go back to body pillow. I, body look, pillow. I, I couldn't even asked. get the, the, the old, river rights. I'm like, wow, this border. body pillow has a lot of veins. Yeah. <laughs> um, this throbby pillow. <laughs> throbby pillow. That's yeah, and it's memory foam. Oof. And Oof. so it remembers his Yeah, cock. it remembers oh. you being here. Or you, you could catch your wife cheating on you better, where it was just like, who is here? Oh, shit, it was Liam Neeson. Or these, you, you know. Can, you would just tell. You could tell. Like, the, oh, yeah. he, looks like he, he looks like the snake from Tremors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that actually, it's a good one, yeah. He's, he goes, watch, what are you going as for Halloween? He watch goes, the sand. He goes, I'm going as, a, I'm going as Ripley, and my yeah. cock is going a ch as a chess buster from Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, buddy. That's How pretty, dark does Jamie Foxx get? Is he it, like? Well, he's already black. Well, no, I was going to say that's that. behind the scenes. Oh. Does he well, his, go this dark of humor too? He, yeah. I mean, he's got a. I mean, he has. I know him back in the day. Yeah, way, an way, way, unbelievable way the day. sense of humor. Yeah, and he's. I mean, fastest. I mean, it's unbelievable how fast he is. He's just like. Dzz, dzz, dzz. And yeah. so that's what we do when we were on set. That was the shit that we we couldn't say because I would pitch jokes, and um and we would just shoot them. Some of them made it. Some of them done. Family you know, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a hundred percent. Family show. So. But we would try to, all we would try to do is bust each other up. So like David, he and I would just sit there and just toss out jokes. And then if any of them that we thought was like right for the show, we're like, all right, we'll say that one. But most of them was like, nah, you can't say that nah, shit. Nah, 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 nah. Famous show. Real. Yeah. So I, the first time I met, he was one of the first celebrities I met in LA. And he yeah. wasn't really that famous at the time, but I was a huge fan of Unlimited Color and all this stuff. And it's like 2000, 2001, right? Yeah. Um, 
There was a like a sushi place on Sunset. Fuck, I forget the name it's of it. It's called Miyagi's. Yes. They used to do a karaoke Karaoke night. that he ran. Yes. I know. He, he hosted the Brother. karaoke night. You know what's crazy about that, by the way? In 2001, he had already done, in Living Color, the Jamie Foxx show, mm -hmm. a ton of movies. And you think about somebody who was that famous, and then now you look at him and you were like, comparatively? Yeah. Exponentially, so, like unbelievable, has jumped levels. So I, I just got to Los Angeles, right? And I was, again, huge fan, all that stuff. Yeah. Go, go to karaoke night on Tuesday yeah. at a sushi place hosted by Jamie Foxx. And I was like, oh my God, we're, we're fucked. Like if you have a career that great already, and then you're hosting a karaoke night at a sushi place, they weren't paying. It's not like no, he, he just had it. a blast doing it. Yes, mm. and you know what's crazy about that? That's yeah, what Rog people Rogan's think. not getting paid to do these pop up shows at Vulcan Comedy Club all the time. He just comes down there because he loves doing you fucking stand up. He yeah, give a shit. Because there's something that you can get out of that that you're not getting in other places. Yeah, like for sure. It, it's I mean that you I love always that about see comics. those stand ups always go back to the uh, stage. A hundred percent. I mean yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. sometimes they don't, but almost always they go back. If, so yeah. But, so he would do impressions like as he sang, right? Yeah. So then incredible. Yes. So you kind of we kind of got this groove where because I, I would go up there to a voice or whoever it was and yeah. I'd be like oh shit fuck man I'll see you next week you know oh, and so yeah. then it became like just if you were doing karaoke there it was just fucking bangers only and like if you sucked it was like great you can't do karaoke oh yeah it was it was the way that people think Hollywood is like if you go to a bar <laughs> and they expect to see like Paris Hilton and Justin or whatever they, it is they were all there they, that's how it was and yeah. that was the and for him he is the perfect guy I think of him as like the MC of life because I've been to so many situations where he's been that position and everyone does it. Like we were at a club one time in Australia and he was in the, this area and he was hosting the club. This mm -hmm. was like maybe 10 years ago. Um, and then um, they put on uh, Gold Digger yes. and he sang his part live. Uh, dude, dude. People's faces were melting like at the end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark. And because he's one that can just turn it on anywhere, anytime, it's any place. It's, it's what a real entertainer should be. Yeah. That's why we see he's the best entertainer. I did a thing, I had a movie over in uh, Cannes in France, and um, uh, Kanye was playing a uh, private thing for, for one of my buddy's movies. Yeah. And uh, there's a bunch of famous people in the crowd, and he saw Jamie Foxx, and he goes, Oh, shit, Jamie, sir. come on stage. Come up on stage um, and, and go gold digger and then just bust out. I mean, just perfectly. It's unbelievable. Went into it, the whole fucking song, and then got off the stage like nothing else had happened. Kind of reminds you of the whole rap pack amazing. thing back in the day. Everybody yes. was doing, so now there's multi-hyphenates, but they're all, mostly it's it's one uh, creator style thing and then a bunch of production or yeah. fucking EP style stuff. Back then it was like all creator stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were like dancing and singing and acting and all that, playing music and it was crazy. I actually, yeah. that's exactly how I think of him. Yeah. I think of him as, as somebody from like the golden age of Hollywood. Yeah. Same, and I can't, you know, when I, when I, knew, I mean, knew a, you were doing a the true, show with a him. A true entertainer, right? A yes. true yeah. entertainer, true. That's that's in, in, the, in every sense, not yeah. that they get by on the other shit. Right. That he could be a profession. That's the thing that people don't understand about him. If he was like, I'm gonna pick one thing to do, yeah, yeah. he could make a living doing that yeah. one thing and not like, oh, you're good at this, but you can also pass as this. Right. Well, he, he had a number one album. Yeah. Did, yeah. I, mean, I mean, pretty nuts. And it was fucking hits. And the fact dude. that he could do drama, that Did he, he could win do a comedy? Grammy? Uh, he would he, have, have, yes. If look he up, uh, Hot Bob, look up Jamie Foxx's Has Grammys. he won an Oscar? Yes. Yeah, yes. For, Has he yeah. won a has he won a fucking Emmy? An EGOT. I don't know if he's got the EGOT yet. Not Probably a Tony. Not a, he, I don't think he's done did, play. What would he have? He may have got an Emmy with Olympic Color back in the day, but he didn't do. So a whole they lot did. Of TV. He wasn't on. They won actually the first year that mm. In Living Color was on. They won the best show, but he wasn't a cast member. Well, the first hopefully season. he'll win an Emmy on this new on this show because I mean you're already fucking popping up at number one. And look, to be frank. Network television isn't kicking out bangers that much anymore. So no. when you actually kick out one that is not a banger compared to all the rest of network television, but just well, a the craziest in thing is we're on Netflix. That's a and big so deal. We got global. So when we went yeah. to number one globally, yeah, that and we didn't know. Jamie's a producer, and the coolest thing is like it's about him and his daughter Corinne. It's mm. their story, mm -hmm. and so she's an executive producer on the show as well. And we, you know, Jamie is, you know, he is in such a good connect with the fans. I'll tell you the, the, the one of the coolest things about him that I experienced two, three weeks ago, we were going out after we were doing press, we were doing these long days and we would go to this restaurant in LA and a lot of people, especially at his level, when someone would be like, hey, a table came over and was like, you know what, you know, it's my wife's birthday. She's like the biggest fan of yours. Mm -hmm. Could you just come over and take a photo? Mm -hmm. He would sit down with them. Yeah. And it, at that level, and I remember looking at our buddy and I was like, I don't think people understand that 
that that just doesn't happen no. with people at his level. He is the friendliest guy at the table. He gets to know you. He, I mean, you could tell that woman has never smiled that much in her life. It was unbelievable and for him to just kind of come over there and then share like a half hour. Crazy. It was, it was, he's one of the, yeah, most generous guy. And the other thing too about this show in particular is, uh, you know, we were talking about nepotism and all that other shit. Um, dude, they're genuinely best friends. He used to bring her out to all the events. So like, oh yeah, dude, I've seen her for years, years, years. She's been on every single thing and like, it was she, like his he best took her friend. To the, yeah, he took her to the Oscars. Yes. Was, was that, I mean, now that you, you've, you've got the inside tip on this, was that the, the, the deal like um, in real life of like, hey, I just want to do a show with my daughter, my best friend. So he actually, it's amazing because I, I know that he'd been working on this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, the stories are real. That's what's so crazy about it. And I know that he and his daughter already have such an incredible chemistry from Beach Shazam, where they co-host that together. Oh, shit. And I think, you know, when you yeah. see the two of them in that capacity, you're, it's it's so natural and the sort of the relationship that they have that you, to try to bring that to screen where, you know, she grew up in Hollywood with her father who was like this big deal all the time, but such an incredible dad and him balancing those two things. I don't think we've ever seen something like that before, certainly not <clears throat> in, a, in a sitcom format. And so I, I know that he's been trying to make this forever and it just, everything clicked. Well, I mean, it's almost like Entourage, right? Where they're, Mark Wahlberg's kind of telling this, his own story, but in a kind of yeah. caricaturized way or whatever the fuck. But even that yeah. took years to get on. Yeah, years. Ten, it took him 10 years to yeah. get it on screen. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I, I had originally, there was a story I went back and looked at that he announced, Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me, got picked up by TBS in 2013. That's the first time it ever got recorded. Wow. <sighs> TBS 2013, we just made the first season in 2020, seven years later for Netflix, completely different network, completely different whatever. And we, he and I were friends back then, but I, you know, I, I'm happy that it, it's now because I wouldn't have been able to do it back then because sure. I was on Two Broke Girls. And so it, it falls into place exactly, you know, you're exactly where you're meant to be. So how yeah. did you guys get hooked up in the first place? I mean, you've had commercial success in television already. Yeah. Both so, as an actor and as a writer, right? So, yeah. So I got lucky. I, um, like about 12 years ago, they were doing what they pitched was a new and living color. Mm -hmm. And they had said, if you want to do this, you know, which I don't even know what that meant. If that was like their way of saying it's going to be an, an urban sketch show with one white with guy, one white guy. Yeah. but that's how they pitched it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and sometimes that's right. And sometimes it's not, you know, when you go and ask them, they're like, dude, we're just looking for funny people. That's not what we right. said, you know? So I went in there. And I um, didn't really do impressions at the time, but I was like, in Living Color was my favorite show. I really wanted to be, so I sat in front of Wait, YouTube. What year is that? 12 years ago. 12, yeah. It was like We're doing the impressions? No, not really. What? No, it's real, for real, how for did real. You, how did you pick that up late in life? You know, it was funny. I could do characters and I could do a lot of accents and they were like, we, we, we want you and they, they, but they won't, you have to do impressions because if, if you are selected, a lot's going to fall on you to do that. Mm -hmm. And there weren't, it wasn't going to be like an SNL type of thing where there's like seven, you know, 20 white guys or whatever, and whoever looks like the guy, mm -hmm. they were going to do a lot of prosthetics, like what Jamie does on our show. Yeah. That's how embarrassing me. They're going to do a lot of wig work. So they need to know that you can do this. So they, I did, I think like Vince Vaughn, Seth Rogen. I did like, you know, some guys that I thought, but I just learned them and I got better progressively as the audition cycle went on, because you know when you audition for this stuff, it happens over like two, three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I met Jamie at the third audition, and um, I said to him, and we didn't know he was gonna be there, they brought us in one by one, and they listed like everybody that I said I could do. And he goes, who do you, who can you do? And I go, oh, I'll do whoever you want. I go, and even if it's not on the list, let me see if I can do it for you in the room. And he was leaning back and he literally like sat up in his chair and he went, for real? And I go, yeah, I'll do whoever you want to do. And he goes, well, what bits do you want to do? I go, why don't you and I go back and forth and do bits right now? And he like does this thing where he leaned forward and he put his hands together like this and he just started talking to me as these guys. Mm -hmm. And so we met in that moment and then I wound up booking the show and the show went on air. It had a lot of cast changes for about a year and a half, two years. So this, you're, you're saying back in the day this happened. Yeah, back oh, yeah, before, before, yeah. And he Anything. still kept you on in his mind this whole time to get yeah. this thing made. That's, I mean, obviously he thinks highly of you. He right? was um, he was the guy who I credit. He that's like plucked me decade, out of obscurity. Right? Before two broke, yeah, before yeah. anything. That guy was the one who believed in me before anybody did. What was the impression he asked you to do? He really liked my Mark Wahlberg. He, well, no, but what was the first one out of his mouth? Because you said, hey, man. I'll Nicolas Cage. Okay. Because um, be, at that time, I mean, I, I love Nicolas Cage. Um, 
but at that time, I mean, you know, he, National Treasure had just sort of come out. Like, mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage was one of the most global guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I look enough like him where we could have done a lot of sketches. Mm -hmm. But I said, I, you know, I said, um, and I told him, I'm like, I learned every white guy that you did a movie with. So, because I know that he was going to be in the sketch show. So I, I, I go, you can play you, and I can play the other guy. And so, you know, I had thought about it. Like, I really tried to tailor these impressions to what he would be able to do. Was your Nicolas Cage any good? Yeah, you know what? I won't lie. I don't have any idea. <laughs> you know, I think it's it's pretty decent, but at that time, man, you know, I think my my Seth Rogen was passable. I think my Vince Vaughn was passable. My Obama was passable. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't. I couldn't even tell you if they were if they were any good. But I think like I, I made a character out of them, and I have a, and I had a point of view, and I think the writing was pretty strong. And then I, as I got on the show, and they asked you to do all this stuff, it's like you know. It's a trial by fire. You like mm, have to yeah, do yeah. this stuff. Well, you just watch the people over and over and over and over and over yeah. again. Then usually you're like one word will click and yeah. you and I are the same that yeah, way. Yeah. And then whatever that word is or that like Obama, it's that pause in between, ah, uh, that like the pause in between. And then you're like, all right, great. I think I can get the rest of this. Um, that's crazy though, because I like I was just a kid and I could just pick it up with my ear. Right? For sure. And that's usually most people who can do like impressions and shit like that. To just have this kick in this late in life has got to be a weird. It was so weird because it, because I think my reps were like, we would have submitted you for a ton of other yes, shit. Yes, dude. But like, I was like, I booked. didn't, it never even crossed my mind. And then they were like, and then it was, you know, do impressions. Like we were talking off mic about the obscure ones. Mm -hmm. Like those are the only ones for me that are worth, I mean, I have to do other ones because I get hired to do certain ones. But if I'm going to learn an impression, it's going to be an obscure one. It's yeah. not going to yeah. be, you know. Well, I mean, you don't want to be that asshole in Vegas competing with all the other Elvis's man. No, no, I don't. You know what I mean, fuck that shit. <laughs> I'll be an asshole for different reasons, but not yeah. that. <laughs> but I mean, like you can seriously throw a rock in any direction in, on the Vegas Strip and find somebody who can do an Elvis impersonation. As a matter of fact, you could probably find four people in this room. In this right room, now. yeah, exactly. And right. you know, but I, I, I did also. It's it makes it more relevant because when I'm doing stand up and you do stuff that's current, mm. if you're doing stuff about like Jack Nichols, I mean, it's like it, yeah. you're really not only are you dating yourself, but you're not allowing the audience into you're sort of pulling them out of reality because you're having to take a, a, a time travel back yeah. right. to get them to be like, but you know, remember when Johnny Carson? It's like, dude, I don't, I wasn't alive <laughs> for that shit, you know. So to keep them by doing current stuff, it helps keep you. And also, I so think you're it always keeps you learning sharp. new ones. Then, yeah. What's, who, the, what's yeah, the latest who, one? Yeah, I'm trying to do Chris one? Hemsworth now. <laughs> That's which, obscure. Which which one though? Oh uh, yeah, Thor. I would say Chris Hemsworth sounds like he's about to let go of a pee. <laughs> that he's been holding on to for an entire road trip. He's always exhausted from the gym. Mm. So like I so like and that's something that I'm working on now. But it's like it takes you know uh, it'll take like you know. It'll take like not Thor jokes because he obviously he's trying to do other stuff. Right. But trying to figure out something about him. But it's you need they need to be big enough and globally where people will get them. Right. So do you look for what they're gonna do next? Because it's it's Chris that's gonna be Hulk Hogan in the Netflix. I know. Oh boy. Uh, biography. That yeah. one. That and one's obviously rife for with par for so, parody. Oh yeah. Right? I don't know if you remember this, but a year ago when this got announced and you and I were were on air and I was yeah. like, holy shit. Um, I go, dude, he's I mean, going to have to take all the steroids. There's not a whole, I saw a picture of him the other day. Yeah. Holy there's, shit. There's not a whole lot of light color haired uh, actors that are fucking 6'2". Right. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, they're Hogan, also muscular. It's Hogan, Hogan was bigger life. than that. Six, yeah. Six, Hogan's six. Yeah. He's like six five, I think. But yeah. He's yeah, like he's you're huge. not you're not gonna find that anywhere. No. Now. But just just got to get a guy in the same range that can also bulk up and has demonstrated that before. Right. And, but it's know. it's also somebody that had to have been sort of on their way because right, unless they have sure. you know for 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 fame reasons but also size reasons, it's like you know those guys. To them, they'll go, now we're going to be, it's like with Zach, what's his name? Levi for Shazam. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, you know, some guys just can't put on that muscle. He lives here. No. Yeah, yeah he lives in Austin. It'd be yeah. great if you were like in this studio and I turned around, he's been there the whole time. Well, Shazam, oddly enough, bitch. dude, we were doing, uh, who was it, Barnes Courtney that night? Yeah. Um, and he About was, two years he ago, was yeah. just in there and I was like, oh, shit, I did done a movie with him way back in the day mm. and I was like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he goes, oh man, I just moved here, about six acres and everything else. And I was like, no shit, everybody's coming. Yeah, some, yeah. some people, some people, there is no natural way for them to put on that amount of bulk. No, that's what I mean. No. Get, with Chris, like for you, for example, it. if you're going to go out and get two forty, it's going to take you probably six to eight months. You're to right. Do that yeah. shit. And a lot of drugs. A lot of pancakes. That, yeah. The fucking Indian dude did it. Uh, Kumail, Kumail Nanjiani. Kumail, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he looks great. By he the way, he did it, but it took. Every he said, I mean, on every interview, it took him over a year, mm. and they a he year. had to train a year to put that on. He was doing a new fit, 
the the hook em ups. Uh, yeah. yeah, where they electrocute you. Yeah, I was out. dude. I was doing it. That's it's fucking real. But um, did yeah. it did it work for you? Yeah, yeah it, at the time, yeah. But this was pre pandemic, and it was just like you'd come when you leave there too. It's you're like swollen. You're yeah. literally fucking swollen. hundred percent. Yeah. And what they were saying was uh, they would put the machines on people like right before they would go on screen. I was like, well, it makes sense. Yeah, of course. Um, because you. Pump yourself up. Yeah, in the quick, old days, then, I was going to say, yeah, you, or, or or with all the the uh, the uh, water deprivation that um, mm. Hugh Jackman used to do. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so that yeah. he Just could to look. Get Wolverine or uh, uh, X Men Two and to look it's really gayer. really came out looking crazy. Well, he's can't, can't get any gayer. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, take that out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wolverine, it's in the shot. <laughs> but Mac from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Rob McElhinney, yeah. did the same thing. I mean, well, he, he was he honest. did both he was ones like though. And seasons it's, before season yeah. seven, he fucking was eating sixty. 500 calories a day to get fat yeah, yeah. he gained 50 yeah. pounds of fat yep in three months yeah he said On he, purpose. He, he would just eat buckets of ice cream yeah like yeah. he was just like i i was i'd be sick at the end of every day from eating so much but he wanted like his thing was in sitcoms typically or any television series usually as the show gets more money and you get paid more you start to age in reverse like people in yeah. season five, glow up. Look, it's called glow yeah. up. Yeah, glow yeah. up. People yeah. in people in season five look better, better than, than season they did. One. Yeah, of course. So yeah. he was like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna get fat as fuck." Yeah. And I can't tell if he's legit dedicated to the art or if he just wanted to get fat. No, he honest. he thought it was hilarious, and because then he gets his super wife is fucking ripped. His wife is fucking hilarious, so she's like, "Great, right, yeah." She's always it. been ripped yeah. though. She's, she's never like, fine. It's for work. Yeah, it's yeah, a write yeah. off. <laughs> Our insurance bill's going through the roof. It's a write-off. I'm sure he lost two years off of his life, but they made a couple mils, so, uh, you know. 50. Dang. Yeah, so that, he'll buy him that, back. That yeah. particular contract, I remember when they signed it, was 50, and it was just like for three seasons or Who four knows seasons, what it is now? Oh, I mean, God. it's the longest-running live-action sitcom Because they history. signed it on for three more. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. At what point does FXX, I guess, now that they work for, just sign them to an indefinite contract? You let us know when you're done. A lifetime yeah. deal? You yeah, they're, I mean? they're the, like the uh, 60 Kansas. minutes. Yeah. 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 Uh, why not? I mean, it's never gotten Did Bill old. Self get a lifetime deal? Lifetime deal. Wow. Lifetime Bill Self, deal. the basketball coach? Yep. A lifetime, lifetime deal? deal at Kansas, yeah. That is so crazy. When wow. uh, Roy Williams retired from UNC. North Carolina, oh, yeah, yeah. they went in the next day and they were like, well, we're not having this happen again. Yeah. So uh, we'll give you a Are lifetime deal. Are you a big deal. college basketball fan? Huge. Who's your team? Uh, I went to the University of Illinois. So. Oh, were, fuck you, dude. Were you there for the Self days? Yeah, I was. Okay. So wow. that's why I, I, uh, oof, I he fucking was, hate you that. Were, you, were con- <laughs> you were confused where that voice came from. I was. Like I was like, seconds. I was like, God? God? Yeah. Bill, Bill Self? I looked up there like we're doing a community theater production <laughs> yeah. of a Tennessee Williams play. <laughs> what if it was Bill Self? Huh? <laughs> I'd be like, yo, yo, Bill Self, you motherfucker. So you went to Hope Illinois. he's a fan and listens. I, picked, I went to Penn State. He went to Ohio State. I went to Ohio State. State. It's all Big Ten show. Yeah. Oh, I went to, I went to yeah. Ohio State. But uh, I picked Illinois to win it all. Oh, dude. And they crushed my dreams, my bracket. So we have another. I picked Baylor before the season started. So right? every, yes, I will say this, though. And, um, and I, um, high school basketball, like the fact that they're getting Chet Holgram, you know, for Gonzaga. Yeah, that like, kid. Dude, that kid is, is the I, real deal. I you spent hear half people an hour watching video of him the other day. He moves like a fucking six foot. Fucking oh, he's a, he is he's like 110. Six. Pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did Kevin Durant, right. though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's a better ball handler than Kevin Durant was at that time. He's way and better. he's taller. He's seven one. So they're they're if already. If he can put on any, if he can put on like twenty five pounds of muscle, that kid is gonna. Be, he might be one of the best fucking shooters we ever seen. Because oh, at can, that he, height, it doesn't like matter. A, you can't get in his face. Like, look at. Remember, you can watch Kevin Durant. People come up and get in his face. It's like, all right, dude, I'm six eleven. Yeah, he just shoot over you. Yeah. That's Fuck why he's a sniper. Do. Yeah, you know what I mean. But they but they lost Jalen Suggs. But I'm like, yeah, but I I. Jalen's great. I wish him the best. I'd take that trade any day. Yeah, me too. For Chet. I mean, Suggs is a good scorer. For yeah, sure. but that height at that level with those balls, I mean, yeah, I don't know. But they're yeah. only going to get Gonzaga one year. Is out the of that kid. Duke, right? so that's is the new Duke. 100%. So that is the new Duke. That's what Everybody's a lot of people are saying. Yeah. And um, I, I think is I will tell you this though I am a Duke fan because all those guys come from Chicago Jabari Parker Jaleel Okafor um, Corey Maggette back in the day and yeah. I are the same year um, I played one year of high school ball and he and I are the same year so a lot he of those a, guys were you still friends when he was at the Clippers and all that shit were you guys friends in real life no I, I oh, he's one of those guys I've never met it's oh, so really? weird we have so many I know but time, we yeah. have so many mutual friends in L A mm-hmm. and whenever I say I'm from Chicago and I'm a Duke fan they're like you must know Corey and I go it's funny I, I was at basketball stuff with him mm. but I never met him no shit yeah but I but I loved that he played for the Clippers because I had been you know had watching him but a lot of those guys they were they were a big Chicago was a big place 
for a lot of those guys mm-hmm. to go to Duke. Yes. And so I, well, I Chicago is kind of the AAU basketball mecca, isn't it? I it's unbelievable. Dude, Kevin Garnett that, played there. Yeah, Other than York, York, Dwayne yeah. Wade, yeah. Yeah. Actually, we had a lot went, of dudes. Kevin Garnett was a, a senior when I was in eighth grade, but we went to the same high school. Farragut. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, no. Th- that's where he went to later. I went to Malden High School. Yeah. South in South Carolina. Carolina. Then yep. he, then he I know. And he went to Chicago. Exactly. What happens when you get greats, then they pair you up, bro. That dude. 30 people. As kids, we would play. We would go to the playground, and it's just him fucking dunking on people constantly. We we're like, all right, let's go play somewhere else because it sucks being. Yeah, yeah, and then he moved. He played one year at Farragut with this yeah. guy Ronnie Fields. Yeah, yep. who was yeah. So I, th- all those guys, it was incredible the, the the amount of people that we were around all the time that all became pros, and mm. a lot of them have NBA rings. And yeah, to just see them reading about them in the paper back then was just fucking yeah. unbelievable. It is weird to see, like, it's weird to think about uh, Gonzaga having a one-and-done guy. Because this guy, unless he gets hurt or something. Jalen Suggs is a one-and-done, though. Yeah, it's yeah. true. I guess yeah. it's true now. It's just different. It's different. But the thing days. is, you know what's funny thing is, and I will, the only way I, I will say this, I wish them the best, and I, this is not like a compared to Duke. The thing is, they've only, they've had recent success. So they'll have, they're having a moment right now. Yeah. Like in terms of getting like the 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 blue chip recruits that Duke and Kentucky are clearly one and two, mm-hmm. Michigan is starting to get back there because mm-hmm. of the success they've had as of late. But when you look at Duke and Kentucky's recruiting classes, and then there's like Carolina and Kansas are second tier. Mm-hmm. Gonzaga, but besides Chet Holgram, they've not really gotten those number one guys. Like a couple years ago, when when Duke got like they just had Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that just happened. Right. So and they already have that guy Pablo who's coming in who's the third in this class, you know, mm-hmm. and they're looking at some of those other guys as well. I think that Gonzaga, again, no disrespect to the program, they'd have to prove themselves. They've gotten to two finals yep. and they do very well. They haven't won a chip yet. Even before Coach Krzyzewski was there, Duke had been going to the final four and then they mm-hmm. went like seven out of nine years in a row, four with Christian Leitner alone. I mean, like they have really built up as a well, final four program. House by Baylor. I mean, it was, yeah. that how, was a but house, house, bro. Yeah, how they're, they're West Coast Villanova. West yeah. Coast, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Better, yeah. better put. By the way, yeah. that's my, and I think Villanova's amazing. But how long did but, it take Clemson football to start getting tier one recruits over and over again, which they do now, right? Like it's, it's yeah. The, yeah. the the it's the, the coach. The recruit classes that you see these days are fucking exactly what you expect based on the previous performance from last season in college yeah. football, right? So how long did it take Clemson after what was the 2014 season when they really started to get good? Like how long did it take them to start getting tier one recruits? Because remember, they stole Lawrence from fucking Georgia. Georgia wanted that motherfucker bad. They were really going oh, yeah. to sacrifice their children for this guy. Yeah. And they, and, and fucking well, dad. Well, the was problem is, is that um, the, the difference between football and basketball is basketball as a singular player, you can really make a name for yourself in a way that if you go to a smaller market That's or a true, team yeah. that doesn't have superstars, whereas football, you're not going to win without guys. Yeah. Usually the guy that leads the league and score or leads the nation in scoring is from like San Diego State University. 100%. And then like people kind of yeah. go, and by the way, it doesn't hurt his draft pick. Look at John Morant. You yeah. know what I'm saying? John Morant. People were like, he was good in high school. Same with Trey Young. He goes, I don't want to go to a Kansas or a Kentucky or a Duke. And then it didn't hurt his draft stock at all. Whereas in football, those teams, Alabama, you know, Clemson, they're going to yeah. be there. You yeah. need to be with those guys yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. or you're not going to win. And that's the thing with, with, with Chet. It's am- I don't think that it's unbelievable that he picked that school, but I think that if he, if they don't win a championship with him, I don't know how much they're going to, it's going to help their recruiting mm. because I, I just, I'm not sure. He also went to the same high school as Jalen Suggs. Yeah. So their high school uh, Minnesota. Yeah. Those guys yeah. were, they beat Sierra Canyon with, with Bronny. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. those guys felt, they said that that was the best high school team of all time, which I think is bullshit. Peoria Manuel from Illinois, which won four years in a row, and they beat Kevin Garnett's Farragut mm, team. Yeah. They won that had those guys, Marcus, all those guys that went to U of I, Sergio McLean. That was the best high school team of all time, winning four in a row. But they, but everyone with Bronny, Sierra Canyon, like that's the best team. Chet came in and they whooped well, how would that be? How would that I've be the best said team? I don't think Bronny is going to be an NBA superstar. No, but, but uh, no. He'll play, but like, how could they be the best? Bronny is a freshman. No, of course, but they just, the hype about it and like, like four years, Dwayne Wade's years kid. Is there, yeah, but I'm like, but Chet Holdren, I mean, that dude, he is because I saw LeBron play in high school a bunch, and he was like the Billy Madison of high school, like, yeah. he was like, now nah, you're yeah. all in big, big trouble, yeah, because he was a he, man, dude. When he was playing he those was like guys, 15 years old, I couldn't man, believe yeah. it. Like, yeah. I, I saw him play at St. Vincent St. Mary, I saw him play in yeah. Magic Toronto Ball Classic, and I saw him play at a tournament out in, in uh, New Jersey. And I was just like, yeah, that dude. And that's what Chet reminds me of. His size. His, dude, he he can hit threes at that height. So let me ask you this. If you're Gonzaga, do you take Holmgren, Chet Holmgren, or do you take Chet Hanks? 
because it is white boy summer. I'm, t- I'm tired way. of people trying to make Chet Hanks famous, dude. <laughs> then knock you get the fuck off, all right? He's, just knock it off. Well, then you are going to hate m- me because I am his manager. Do you do and, it? Uh, <laughs> and it's a little weird now. Do you do a Chet Hanks impersonation? No, I do Tom Hanks. Well, <laughs> you do the dad. Now you just have to. I, you, here's my impression of Tom Hanks being uh, disappointed by his son. Okay. <laughs> wow! No! Wow! <laughs> 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 I'm looking at your clip from the Today Show. Um, was that a fucking I've made it moment, like going on the Today Show? That was insane because this is so. I did Rachel Ray, and um, I got a call, and they're like, "You're going to be on the Today Show the next day, but you can't do any of the same impressions." And I was like, "Well, why not?" I said, it, it go, "They're competing networks, and so they're like, if you think you can do." 10 more impressions mm-hmm. that are relevant, then they said they'll take you. That would have been a good information You're to kidding. have. So if you said no, then you weren't gonna be on the Today Show? Yeah. That I said, I go, I go, Tell I me go information that would have been helpful yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So I go, hold on, let me go see who I can do. And I went, because they'd have to accept them as the impressions that they were gonna put on the air. No way. Oh, you had to clear them with Dude, them before? Dude, it was crazy. Was it, was it pre-taped or is it, is it No, is it that live? was live. Yeah. Ooh, well, there it is. And my manager at the time, God bless him, but it's like, geez, I mean, I haven't been with him forever, but he was like, oh, he'll do it. He goes, you'll just learn 10 new impressions tonight. And I was just like, what are you fucking talking about? Well, it's one of those things where, that's why I bring up the Today Show, is like, it's a mom thing. Where like your mom is going to be proud of you for that. So yeah, you, for sure. You have to do the today. Like, uh, no, I did. I stayed in and I worked on them and I said, I'll do these. Will these, are these acceptable? And as soon as they, they got cleared or they cleared them, uh-huh. that's what I worked on that day. And I learned, and I really tried to sharpen. And I honestly, I don't even remember who I did. Uh-huh. And um, it was just one of these things where m- my childhood best friend was with me. He, he happened to be in New York. And so we literally sat in the hotel room and I was like, does this sound enough like this guy? Or like, does this work? And then, I, so we called them back and they're like, well, what about these? Uh, and then they were like, okay, yeah, we can, uh, we'll do them. Have you ever, do you do any impressions of any of your friends? Because you, I mean, you have a lot of comedian friends. One of them, Adam Ray, is a host of a fucking show on our network. Which yeah, I love Adam yeah. Ray. Shout out to yeah. Adam Ray. He's yeah, the, he does a lot best. of, he, his impressions are pretty good, but the way he fucking, his, his mannerisms. The, the, the writing and the mannerisms. Are yeah, the really yeah, funny yeah. Part. Uh, I don't, I mean, it's, maybe like when we get drunk and just like start doing impressions of one another, it'll work. Like, it, you know, you sort of do them. But the, a lot of the impressions that I've learned that I sort of had that have legs are stuff that I thought, would work in a room full of people that had never been to Hollywood. You know, like I tried to do Sebastian Maniscalco, you know? Sure. But then it's like, I realized if people don't, I mean, and I you love have to Sebastian. Explain who he is. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I love him. He's from Arlington yeah. Heights, yeah. Illinois. He's, he's hilarious. From, he's hilarious. And we grew up, I mean, he's older than me. He's a character for sure. And, uh, and if you know him, then you know him. Yeah, yeah. And then, so it's those guys when they become global, it's like how a lot of guys do Chappelle or, mm. you know, Louis C.K. and stuff. So once, you know, if they get sort of, the bigger they get, I, I suppose, you know, I probably would learn it then at that point. Yeah, because with Sebastian, that's an interesting one because I just, I didn't know who it was. Well, yeah. I think, I think people I, now I just, are starting to learn Well, here's who the he thing. I just kept seeing because his of the fucking Netflix name specials. on Netflix yeah. over and over and over. And his Finally, name is so specific that you can't mistake it for anything yeah. else. But I've heard him a million times on Sirius XM Channel 95, the Comedy Central channel back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Because he has never clean seen humor. His, I'd never seen his face before. And then I, yeah. like, who, people kept telling me, go check this guy out. So I look at it on Netflix and I'm like, I wasn't paying attention. I'm like, oh, I recognize that voice. And I look at his face. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I, I know this guy already. Yeah, he like had one of these things where he was planting seeds forever. And yeah, then so when yeah, yeah, he, yeah. it's crazy for, to him now, he's like the, you know, the overnight success that only took like 15 years. Yeah, uh, yeah. More than that, right. yeah. I and mean, now, but he sells out, fuck yeah. yeah arenas. Stadiums, arenas. Yeah. arenas. Do you I think do he a, sold out Madison Square Garden 17 nights in a row or something. He, wow. he definitely did. Atlantic City, because the guy that was opening for me in uh, at uh, Helium in uh, Philadelphia, mm. he was opening for him, and they added, they like had nine shows that was, I can't remember, the thousands of people, yeah. and they added three or like nine more or something like that, and then he was able to do them all sold out. You know, hey, so you know what triggered me to him finally after the next flip shit was uh, Forbes came out, and they had their richest comedians. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was on there, and I was like, Oh, that the fucking guy who keeps popping up on Netflix yeah. finally. And I looked, he was making, he made $17 million that year just off of stand up. And I was like, All right, just I got to, I got to click it. And then, you know, yeah. put it on. My wife's sauce is yeah. so fucking fit, you know, and you're yeah, like, okay. Sure. Yeah. He has a very like specific. He doesn't swear like that, of, by the he, way. I know I said he's clean. Yeah. 
Oh, his stuff is clean. He's yeah, like yeah. a modernized, clean Dom Herrera kind of. <laughs> yes. Hilarious, right? yeah. I, did I a mean, Dom was really good. <laughs> I did a show with Dom Herrera at the Laugh Factory, mm-hmm. and it's a clean show. It was the early show. So, like, you, you weren't clean, but you just couldn't, you know, do Catholic church jokes. Yeah. And he literally gets on stage not knowing, and he goes, so I'm balls deep in this bitch, and uh, I'm fucking this kid in the face. And, uh, and, and the whole room, and the comics are just dying back there. And then he gets off stage, he goes, what happened? Uh, tanked up there. And they're like, dude, Dom, it was a clean show. He goes, what? And he, yeah, he did like his Epstein Island shit. I mean, like it, <laughs> that's what I, I called. I said, I go, you, you did your Epstein 15, and um, <laughs> it was like, man, he did. Yeah, he, he, he was the filthiest they've ever heard. And like, there it's like legit, like moms and not kids, but like families, to, yeah. families. So it's like, it's like fan, yeah. fans of Full House showing up to see Bob Saget do a hundred percent. That's a, exactly it's a right. jarring experience. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, I didn't yeah. realize that all that was gonna happen. Yeah, that was gonna. Well, if you the load coming at me, seen Bob Saget, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Does it get filthier than... Then Bob, right, you know. but off the bat, but the thing before any, I mean, there had never been somebody who had, was playing such a family man mm-hmm. who then he was like, but that's never been his comedy. He just yeah, looks yeah. that way yeah, yeah, yeah. and you take the paycheck. I mean, he's doing America's Funniest Home Videos, mm-hmm. Full House, but oh, yeah, yeah. that's never been his Very comedy. Very buttoned up stuff. No. I've got, so I want to do a prequel to Full House, but it's dark. Super so, dark. So it, it starts out with... Like, remember the mom, before Full House started, the mom had just died, right? Yeah. Yep. The uncles move in, so yep. on and so forth. So mine is five years prior to that death. Yep. And Bob Saget's character, Danny Tanner, in the show, super neat freak, named his dog Comet, for Christ's sake. Very anal, very bizarre kind of guy. All those things kind of lend themselves to a serial killer kind of situation, yep. right? So I, my dark five season series prequel to full house is danny tanner is a serial killer this whole time dexter style dexter style yes right and then sometime around season three there's a lot of close calls like breaking bad is sometime around season three his wife starts to get suspicious of what's going on and then season four and five is about him eventually killing her yep right and then it as as soon as it starts as soon as she dies it's uh, da, 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 da. Right. and then it, it but it clicks in, that. and then it's then the regular show goes on. Yeah. I love that. So, if you put that on Netflix back to back, right? Yeah. All the full house seasons, but you start with this the prequel, this and then you go into Fuller prequel. House, yes, yeah, all of it. And, it, and nobody says anything, and you're just I like, love that. This is all this is, and uh, and, and we're doing it. Um, by the Fresh way, Prince is my, doing Fresh Prince, I, did something, something like that. I know, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I, so I what, love that. Shit. What would your prequel be called, like two of a kind? I don't even care. I don't care what it's called or who owns it, or I just want it to get made. So or it'd be four of a kind, because then what beats four of a kind? A full house. A full house. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming this full summer. summer. Coming this summer, full house. Full yeah. house. Whatever it is, I just want it to be made so I can watch it. What's the back? Yeah, the backyard's just full of bodies. That's what actually well, I mean, full house no, means. No, he's, he's, he's a careful. TV host, right? Yes. No, he was a morning weather TV, or morning TV morning host guy, yeah, in yeah. San Francisco, right? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's, who knows what he would have been up to? Maybe t- steal some shit from Confessions of a Dangerous Mind or something like that. Because his he, profession, when he's even around. what he did, yeah. what, what you were saying, like the profession even lends itself to a serial killer. Oh, a sociopath, yeah, like, yeah, hundred yes. yeah, percent. Yeah, and then you drop those five seasons and then stack it, and then it just goes in, da 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 da, and then the whole thing goes on. And You're maybe like, oh, he shit. doesn't kill yeah. his wife. Maybe she dies like season four. No, Dexter he fucking under kills weird her, dude. Circumstances. Yeah, where's her skin? You don't. Ne- he doesn't necessarily Dances. have to be the bad guy. Is what I'm saying. Dexter no. wasn't the bad guy. I want to see him wear her fucking. Skin. Or maybe he's trying to solve the murder. He's a killer who's solving the murder <laughs> of his wife. I love that, dude. I'm in. I'm in. I'm fucking in. I've got I want to play Kimmy Gibbler's dad. Yeah. You oh, see them all shit. like the dads. Yeah. The younger dads. The young, young dads. Shit, bro. Kimmy Gibbler. Because you know she was. You never meet touched. her. You never meet any bro. of her family on the show, right? Never. Never. Dude. Yeah. She was never. homeless. Yes. Apparently. That's what I and think. And it's a, it's a hardcore she, rape like, uncle. And it's she's like, like, dude. Hard drama. She's like Boner from Growing Pains. You never meet his family either. No, no you never why, met uh, why, Richard T. Stabone's Why do sitcoms dad? have all these weird fucking homeless children? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're the sitcom the orphan guy. Train. You tell me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the orphan train just got, ooh, this is getting a little <laughs> What's dark. happening here? Kimmy Gibbler. I've got another great TV show idea, and it's a cartoon of Alex Jones, but we'll get to that later. I love no, that. We, we get to now. It's, it's cartoon. We just it's, can't it's, put it anywhere. It's Alex Jones in the third grade. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Just going through school. But he's still Alex But he's Jones. applying all of oh, his no, of Alex course. Jonesness yeah, yeah, yeah. to the school yeah, yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. Come up, come up to the board and he's just like, all right, all right, all right, all right here's the thing. Okay, uh, uh, there, there, there's Earth. Yes, Earth, Earth. Earth is still there, but but, but it's not there. And, 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 and it's the fucking shy comps. And then you have the kids who are all like, oh, fuck. He's well, trying to convince all the other kids that the lunch ladies are putting shit yes, in there. Why couldn't yeah. you put this somewhere? 
We can put it anywhere. You can't even do a fucking. When we had Alex Jones on on uh, we had him on election night. Um, after Rogan was just like, no, we're getting dinged here at Spotify. Yeah, yeah. We, we just did the Spotify deal. We can't put him here. And he um, made the right decision. We made the wrong one, clearly. <laughs> we had but, 300 and something thousand live viewers for that election. I mean, wow. It was gnarly on YouTube. And then the next day, I mean, no, right as the feed cut, yeah. boom, the episode disappeared. We can find it only if we type it in like a, a fucking password for Netflix yeah. where it's and like we didn't get a, we didn't letter get an, for letter, hyphen for hyphen, number for number. And dude, yeah. you yeah. can't, and we didn't get another, our channel. we didn't get another subscriber for three months after that. Four, four, not one, four months, not one yeah. subscriber. Wow. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they don't like him very much. So obviously. that, that yeah, cartoon they, is, they pull a lot of his stuff that, that people, if they have him out as a guest, they pull him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, even, uh, even that fucking Twitter beef, that sweet one with uh, Richard Marks, yeah. um, the ones that I didn't post where he was like, you had Alex Jones on your show, you're the fucking scum of the earth and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, look, he's got opinions about things. Yeah. Wait, the musician most Richard Marks? Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah, got yeah. into a Twitter Dick beef Marks? with him, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he asked uh, my aunt to give him a, a beach backstage at a show. And I, he had said something snarky, political, whatever. And I, I, like, Twitter puts the worst people in your feed that you hate the most so you'll yeah. interact yeah of that's course real. Yeah, yeah 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 and and even though you're not friends with them or, or whatever because that's what people always ask they're like i don't understand why you follow these people I'm, like, I'm not following them it's just every morning i wake up it's the people that i hate the most all in a row going down the road and i'm yeah. just like fuck you so i wrote this thing to richard marx you know he was trying to act all high and mighty about something and i go look dude you were asking my aunt for a beach back in the 80s like behind backstage we're, you're not the fucking expert on on being moral yeah and uh and then he wrote back and was like fuck you and blah blah, blah. So he we, said he called his aunt a liar yeah he goes like, your aunt is it, he goes your aunt is a liar yeah which was really funny i never ask for beach i <laughs> ask for anal yeah yeah for she's sure. not alive so i don't know the real story anyways but um it was probably both but it was yeah, probably, probably it was. mouth and butt probably uh, yeah. probably I love, it. ATM. I love it we're, we're just speculating now it's yeah, probably, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it was probably knowing Richard Marx. Uh, uh, <laughs> but somebody hit me up. Um, oh shit, uh, Jason Rao, I think mm. from uh, uh, Breaking, Breaking Benjamin. Benjamin. Yeah, he was like, uh, he was like, dude, I, I, I think I'm friends with Richard Marx. I was like, mm. how do you think you are, or whatever? And I could tell he was testing the waters. Mm. I'm like, maybe you know, I was like, yeah, we'd have him on the show. I don't give a fuck. He's I seen, have a lot of friends who know Richard Marx. Yes, in he LA. actually. <laughs> he's built this weird Twitter. Yeah. He seems like a pretty funny Fan guy, actually, except with, for the uh, weird political bullshit. No, no, he went down a dark, dark hole later. But like, which the a, the butthole or? I, yeah, so that's what he asks for. Yeah. I think he, I think he tweeted me seventy six times, like seventy six different. Oh, like boy. it started to get serial killer rush. Wow, and it's fine. We could, we'll have him on the show. I think we have our Danny Tanner. I, yeah, boom. He might be a little old. Da, 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 yeah. da. And then, you know, Joey as, as Bullwinkle. Yeah, gee, gee, I don't think you should have murdered those people. Yeah. He's he's actually just a voice in his head. Yeah, he they broke him out of an oh, insane shit. asylum. Yes, bro, I'm that's here to a, help. I'm here to idea. help with this idea. That's another yes, good idea. Jesse the, and the Rippers are on the road, heroin addicts. Oh, what if, <laughs> bro. What if the whole? What if the entire series of Full House was actually hallucinations? Just, just in his brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that'd be <laughs> really good. Too. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he's walking around like the Joker in the streets, and, and there's John, no voice coming out. John yeah. Stamos, who is also known as a worse looking Giannis Papas, is in. Uh, it's in there as, in there as well, right? Yeah, yeah. But he's, he's oh, Jesse yeah. and the Rippers. So Jesse, I'm saying he's, he's Jesse and the, the Rippers. Still yeah. the band, but there, he's a heroin addict. Yeah, mm. number one hit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Before, yeah. yeah. Oh, and it's yeah, a lot of like stains, like Aaron Lewis. I'm on the outside, and then one it's just I, him shooting up right, in the. So one of my just, like, what, nodding like, off. Yeah. Since, since you brought up stained, I wasn't. You, something you said reminded me of it earlier, but now you said the word stained. I feel yeah. like I got to say this. Go ahead. One of my buddies has a bet with Aaron Lewis right now. Yeah, and it's well, it's. I'm not going to say what the nature of the bet is. It involves whatever the fuck it involves. If Aaron Lewis wins, he gets X, and if he loses, he has to go to bars around the area. Yeah. And sing his own songs and karaoke until somebody recognizes him. Oh, in costume. Shit. That's like great. he has to sing his own songs. He hates it too. Yeah, he doesn't like it. He hates it. It's a good bet. I yeah. think. Wait, I, I've heard other musicians do like Jewel. Yeah. There's a few of them that go and sing their own songs at karaoke. <laughs> oh, I, I see. And here's the thing: if you're cool, I would do that. I think you should, right? Yeah. Um, How, I mean, that would the be worst a, is though if you go to karaoke because obviously there's some bangers that someone's like, "I got the Alicia Keys," and everyone's like, "You do not." Yeah. And um, yeah. you get up there, and then you do your own. Somebody's like just butchering one of your oh, fucking yeah, songs. Yeah. That would suck. Just like, hey, can I? Can I? I don't want to yeah. Kanye you right quick. Whitney's but, like, I had to take the easy way out. Yeah. She's like, I'd rather die than listen to these fucking assholes. Bathtub. Butcher my shit. Yeah. Has yeah. there been a song butchered more often 
then I will always love you. I no, mean, that's I, exactly what she I was covered thinking. that song from Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Right, but, karaoke of yeah. all time. It's well, it's Man. Journey. Journey. Well, is, Journey is got to be. But in one. L.A., there's a buddy of mine who is was in a Journey cover band, who looks just like him. Steve I Perry. feel like I feel like Journey is a Journey cover band. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't they well, seem like well, the journey continues. Band? The new guy. The new guy is is he's, he's, he's an just impressionist you know, from. There's a new guy from the Philippines. He doesn't even speak English. Oh. He, and by the way, you know what they should be called? Continuing the journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you watch the documentary? No. Oh yeah, they did a full doc on him on. Uh, he sounds on incredible. So what happened? Are you was, talking about the Filipino kid yeah. or Steve yes. Perry? Well, Steve, Steve Perry. Then there was Steve Algeri. Yeah. Real name. Yes. And that then seemed, uh, it's like a, it's like a, they're trying to make fun of Steve Perry. I know, right? Yeah, we'll call him Steve, Steve O'Jerry. Yeah, fuck Steve like, Perry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the band was sitting around and they still wanted to tour. And Steve Perry yeah. was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm he's good. living in life. Hawaii or something. Yeah, he's like, dude, I'm good on life. I don't want to do this shit. Yeah. And so they were fucking around looking on for YouTube. singers on YouTube. And they found this Filipino kid who sounded identical to Perry. And then sure enough, dude, boom. So they did this whole doc where they go around and, and see what happened to this guy's life and how it changed. And it was like, I mean, it was fucking gnarly because the next thing you know, he's in this tiny ass shithole Filipino, you know, karaoke bar, and then he's doing fifty thousand. Oh, yeah, standing in front of yes, and he couldn't like the pace and everything to try to keep up to do that tour. It's so hard, uh, dude. He was all this vocal shit. They well, had that, wrapped up in blankets and like just watch the trailer. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The hardest thing that people don't realize, I think, with singers are like the fact that Steve. Uh, Steven Tyler can still sing at that level. He can still sing Dream On and all the high notes. That that's the biggest thing. It's iffy. We Dan and I walked out mm. last time. Really? Yeah. He opened up for uh, Post Malone. Well, he actually no Post Malone opened up, opened up for Aerosmith. We were yeah. Super Bowl. And what? When was this? Nineteen. Uh, two years ago. Oh February, yeah, yeah. February so the last time I heard him do it was um, when uh, for Howard Stern's birthday party, and he played piano. They had the gains turned up so high to capture his voice that you couldn't even hear the guitar behind him. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. 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 Like it was, I don't that's know. That's a hard, that could have been sick too. Who knows? Well, I mean, here's the know. thing that, that voice though, cause it you, sounded you bad. know, your voice goes dude at a certain point, especially if you're doing highs and lows and, uh, yeah. Fuck. Even doing impressions. Like there was impressions of super high people that I used to be able to do. My voice is too deep. So I can't, I can't do Gilbert Godfrey anymore. Mm. And I had been asked to do it for this thing. And I remember doing it, putting it on tape. And then this was years ago, even before I met Jamie, when they were just asking, it, it wasn't for an impressionist. They were just asking for something. They're like, you know, comedy or like you're a fan of it. Could you, do you think you could squeeze one of these out? Mm. And going back now to try to do Gilbert Godfrey, no fucking way. Yeah. Couldn't do it. How did he do it all those years? Honestly. Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. He has a Jesus very high Christ. voice. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. some guys I can do, like Wallace Shawn from uh, Princess Bride, who has an exceptionally mm -hmm. high voice. He, for whatever reason, some of them I can still do, but that's just the one I can't do anymore. Yeah. yeah, inconceivable. Uh, fucking Wallace Shawn, dude. He was on Gossip Girl. He was on everything. And no one knows dude, He was in is. Clueless. Yeah. I, that's, I love that you would even attempt that. No one, yeah, yeah. if you see his face, you'll know who it is. Pop, pop open Wallace Shawn. He is the best. The, the, he was, dude. He yeah. was, he was T Rex in uh, Toy Story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as soon as you see this guy's head, you'll know exactly who it is. On screen. everybody knows who he, he is. He is already. the greatest. Just for you don't know his the, name. Nobody just, knows his just name. Just for me seeing the word inconceivable. He's the, he's so oh, yeah, fun, yeah, yeah. and he's always looked this way. This, I mean, he's grayer <laughs> and a little heavier. But what a great face this guy was born with. I love this guy so much. Yeah, Princess Bride is one of my favorite films of all time. It's great. I tried to get him for FDR American Badass, and uh, he was in New York and was like, I'm not leaving New York. Yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. For yeah, he, shit. it's so funny. He, he makes you go to him. To him, sure. Well, now, uh, I mean, he's a legend. Yeah. But back in, to see, he was perfect in, uh, in, in uh, Princess Bride. Mm. As oh, this great. little guy, yeah. just like, inconceivable. Yeah, <laughs> just sort of like, you know, you want me to leave you where I found you unemployed in <laughs> Greenland? And you, you were so drunk you couldn't buy brandy. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm such a, I just love that guy so yeah. much. The only, you, you might be the only person on earth with a Wallace Shawn impression. Well, I love it, but, but he's the same guy in everything. Yeah. I mean, he's great, by the way. I, I mean that as a compliment. When he does T-Rex in the Toy Story, he's like, Woody, no! It's like the same. <laughs> same, when he was the, the dad and Gossip Girl, he still talked to them like that, even though it was a fucking teen as drama. A, you, you do a lot of voiceover stuff. If you're doing a voiceover for a, a T-Rex, do you, because you, I just saw you do it right there. Do, do you? Try to do as much. I, I'll be honest with you. you I try to do as much as I possibly can um, to help. And, mm -hmm. and people think it doesn't, but it's like if you were if you were acting it out, right? 
it's it's whatever it is it's something that shifts about your body like yeah. even when i'm doing an impression even if like if i'm doing vince i'll still touch my heart like even if it's just a voiceover yeah it it feels better and it's it's a more natural thing mm. because it's not natural i think to just sit there and clamp down no that's and weird then try to, you know if you could just do it like that without moving that I would call the cops. Probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. That would yeah. be weird. That's a Hannibal Lecter. Yes. Yeah. My uh, my wife still loves you for for doing the Bourdain for it. Oh, your wife is a sweetheart. That's uh, that's the that's her uh, her all time. And uh, when when you could do a, a Bourdain, she was like, well, he wins forever in my book. Uh, yeah. That's it. I love Anthony Bourdain. I love him again. Like we were talking, I love doing people that people didn't do. Yeah. They, no one does. Him. No one. I, I never heard somebody do it. And I such a hard voice too. To, it's to very get. odd. And he has a very particular cadence, the way that he talks. It goes up and down and he's very thoughtful, but he's clearly reading from a script the entire time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, and it's and it's so, it, he does this thing that's unmistakable. So, because he did so many voiceovers for like Parts Unknown mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So I was like, how is nobody, and I, I learned him when he was alive. I was like, how is nobody doing this guy? He's arguably the most famous food person besides Gordon Ramsay in the world. Oh, Considering yeah, yeah, how yeah. much ADR he did it, like. That's what I mean, yeah. exactly. Like so, you, you heard his voice without seeing his face probably Forever. more than anybody. Forever. Yeah. Wow, right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, and I, and I was such a big fan of him. I feel like a lot of years are like that, where you're always picking the guys that no one thinks of. I'm trying because I think when you're doing stand up or when you're doing jokes, because I used to do um, him doing parts unknown for places like Westeros or like, you know, you know, Wakanda. And like, um, uh, but that you, to me, that is what makes it fun instead of like, because like I'll, I do Christopher Walken and I do think I do my own Christopher Walken. But you know this, like when, when, you, when there's a McConaughey or like anybody, uh, it's hard to not listen to somebody who's done it, like Rich Little, who did Johnny Carson for so mm -hmm. long. When you've heard that and it's just been in the ether your entire life, I don't want to do an impression of someone else's impression. The yeah, because you're way, doing Rich Little doing yes. Johnny Carson. Yeah. Every, everyone does Rich Little's um, John Wayne, speaking of, you know? Mm -hmm. They don't do John Wayne. And so for the me... The whole Pilgrim bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. It's him. And yeah. so yeah. I think the best way for me to do that is to just start fresh. No. And just do my own thing. Uh, look, man, you're a funny fucking dude. Number one show on Netflix, and uh, it's always a pleasure to have I you. I love dude. being here for real. Mm -hmm. Where where are you headed next, stand up wise, and all that stuff? I'm, I'm doing. Uh, depending on when this airs, I'm doing Georgetown. I'll be in. I'll be in Austin until Sunday. Okay. And I'm doing shows Sunset Strip Friday. I'm doing uh, the Green Jay Saturday. Doing 45 minutes out there at that bar show, and I'm doing. Uh, there's one in Georgetown tonight. Mm. And then I, you know, go back uh, to LA, and then I'm just I start going on the road. I'll be in. I'll be. Oh, I'll be back here. I think June 9th. I think to play Stubbs. Mm. Oh shit! I think yeah. Dude. We're working on that right now, With, but it's a pretty good, pretty uh, good lineup. Say or no? We, I don't. I can't say anything about <laughs> it. But uh, but there's some. We they asked me last night if if I could come back for that, and I was like absolutely. So I think that's going to be June 9th. And yeah, um, if, if it's what I think it is, then they're there. They have a, a bunch of question marks. They're working on stuff right now, too. And they just threw it out there to me. And um, but it's cool. I'm going to try to come back because I have so many friends in town here. Again, I, I but in, in Xander will tell you this. I didn't even know this was the podcast I was doing today yeah. until last night. Yeah. He was like, come by and do a podcast. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I didn't even realize you lived here. Yeah. Well, we yeah, just moved well. here. Well, so in we, August, we, yeah. fuck yeah, yeah man. We, uh, what I didn't happened? even realize how many friends I had here. Mm -hmm. What happened was our advertisers and all this stuff were like, hey, everybody's coming here. Uh, Why not? We, and we got the heads up beforehand of like, everybody's coming here. Yeah. We split guests and all this other stuff. And, and we're like, all right, great, let's do it. And it, middle of COVID, we packed up our shit and we're like, all right, great. We're the move. Beverly Hillbillies of podcasting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're like, all right, great. Um, this was supposed to be Alex Jones's studio. He looked at this first because um, he was putting some other shows here. But he was out in the street fighting Chicom. So yeah, he was, yeah, he was he fighting the Chicom. Yeah, I can't get in there. Yeah, he stuck in the back door. So when he came on, he walked in, walked up the fucking stairs, and was just like, uh, he goes, oh god damn it, you guys are those that got the space. Fucking love this place, man. Same sets, brother. You and I got to do a bit called Keeping Up with the Joneses, and it's just. I was doing Alex Jones back and forth going, I'll tell you, I don't like the studio. Feels it's like, like I'll turn you gay. Which like, I'm, not fine with, I'm fine with gay people, but you know, it's, it's like gay. the clumps. Yeah, exactly. Right? But it's all Alex Jones. It's all Alex Jones. Jones. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Alex Jones's mom. Let me tell you something right here. Holy I, I gave birth, he came out, right? He just popped me like, ah. This episode will be deleted. I, we just lost all of our things again. But on we had a great time doing it. We yeah, did. It was fun. We, we always did, didn't we? Uh, we do this thing on the show called The Drinking Bro of the Week, uh, which is somebody who's inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. I want to give it to Sarah Heller. Come on up, Sarah Heller. The famous Sarah Heller. 
Come on, you can come over here. Come on, uh, come on, come on. Uh, I was going to say, can I sit on this one? Papa Bear? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Good. Because your husband's here. Your husband's here, so it's okay. Uh, oh, you guys, aren't, you guys aren't married? Not yet. Okay. Get your shit together, This loser. is the famous Sarah this Heller. problem. She's been a listener that for... That got very personal very quickly. Forever quick. yeah. and ever and ever. Uh, who would you like to give the Drinking Bro of the Week to? Um, actually, my I'd like to give the Drinking Bro of the Week to my roommate. Uh, Abel Torres. Mm. He takes in anyone that ever needs any sort of room, whether it be in our garage or the spare room. And he took me in, so I live there. But he will do anything for anyone at the drop of a hat. And so I'll give it to him. I really like. That's I really. Awesome. I like a man that'll take people into him. Yes. Yeah. That's what I like. Inside of him. He's a, he has. He's running a human animal shelter, and I yeah, love it. Actually, he found someone. It wasn't even a drinking bro. I don't think like some homeless guy that just was. He was really down on his luck and let him stay there for a week. And he was shitty roommate, mm. terrible guy, but he let him stay there for a while. And until he got really bad, then they kicked him out. Yeah, but just uh, Abel, Abel, don't do that again. Like, I that's like, a terrible idea. I like the uh, I like the enthusiasm. The execution leaves a little bit to be desired there. Yeah, and yeah. now obviously I'm gonna have your boyfriend come up. Come up, you can come up and sit on Papa oh, Bear's lap as, yeah, well. Yeah, as well. Come on, come on up. Come on up. Now there it is. Good. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, how long you listen to this show? Uh, since I, I actually didn't get introduced to Drinking Bros until I met Sarah in July of last year, actually. That's why she's amazing, is yeah. because she's churning out new listeners. Now, you need to break up with him, probably find somebody else. Is <laughs> every new listener, it's an average of 17 downloads, is what they tell us. So just start serial dating some fucking people here <laughs> and everything else. Uh, what's, what's your full name? Uh, Nicholas Marquez. Nicholas Marquez, yeah. Canceled. Uh, canceled. 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 With his doctor um, ass. Yep. Sorry. You sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, no, we appreciate you guys coming in today and, uh, and boozing with us. Cool yeah. shirt. Rocco's Modern Life. Yeah. yeah, dude. I love yours. Oh, thanks, bro. PBR. PBR. Come on, dog. Come, on, <laughs> come, come with it, dog. Come on. Come, come with it. Yo, dog. What up, bro? He'd switch. Come it's on, just dog. It's just a swipe. Yeah. I, I took off the jacket, took off the shirt just so I could. Again. Yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. I can't help myself either. <laughs> Look. Check out Jonathan Kite. Check out his new show on Netflix with Jamie Foxx. And uh, you're always welcome here, man. Dude, I'm so happy to see you guys. This was a great surprise. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. And it's amazing that Xander didn't say anything. Like, what? He didn't even give you the address. He just said, oh, it's above the coffee shop. I Is said, I didn't even know I was doing this podcast when we <laughs> talked last night. <laughs> yeah, the well, well yeah, uh, knowing you, Austin. there's 70 podcasts. Yeah. No, I love you, but I'm saying with, because also, I, I, not Adam, I didn't think it was Adam Ray's and Chuck's, but I knew you were like, oh, I've got this podcast. I assume you got a lot of podcasts. <laughs> you got a lot of podcasts. You got a lot of podcasts. Are you there. shooting, dude, if you're here all weekend, are you shooting with Adam? No. Yeah, I you so, should do a show with Adam. He's so, here. No, the funniest thing was, we were going to do, I think we got the dates wrong because he thought I was here next week. Mm. And he goes, oh, I get it in Friday. And, uh, yeah, he I, and Giannis are doing a show Saturday here. Yeah. Like, right. They're doing a here. podcast? Right here. Yeah, right here. I'm on the show with, I'm on the Sunset Strip show with them on uh, Friday night, so maybe I'll see if I can pop in. Yeah. Yeah, just come, come on by. Yeah. Just come on by. We're just going to be dicking around all day Saturday, probably. Oh, sick. I'll yeah, because then we have a watch along for uh, the UFC fights. Yeah, Nazbal uh, Usman, yeah. yeah. And Is so that we're, Saturday we're, we're night? We're going live. Yeah. 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 We're going live. It's uh, 8 p.m. on Drinking Bros Sports, our other, other channel. Yeah, you know, eight ish. Eight ish. Yeah, well, we always say ish. Uh, <laughs> ish. I'll be going live at a bar. <laughs> doing an hour of stand-up. Yeah, what time you go on, eight? Uh, I think the show, yeah, I'll probably go on between, maybe eight, maybe nine. You know what's funny is uh, anybody who's... Night-ish. Yeah, usually doing sets like that, then they'll come here and watch the fights for free. Yeah. Because we have like a 40-foot screen we put up so everybody it's, can watch it's, them. It's, it's awesome. right there. Oh, there yeah, is, yeah, do your, uh, do, come in, do the podcast, go do your sets, come back and watch the rest. Yeah, yeah. And rage, rage. There's always weird people, man. Uh, and it's great. Everybody's getting fucked up. Uh, mm. We'll see you soon. I hope so. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. I love you. I love you, too. Uh, for uh, Jonathan Kite, Danton, Danton, Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.